I am Lou with another episode of My Car Story and today we're in the western suburbs of Illinois and I've got Diane with me and she's got a great car for you. What year making model is this one? This is a 1967 Dodge Monaco 500. And we're going to get you right to our featured attraction. Now Diane, why, come on right alongside me, why heavy metal this one out of all the cars in the world? Well, I was looking for a C body. Because? You know, it's one of, because it reminds me of my first car. There you go. Yeah, it was a that was a '67 <laughs> Chrysler. Did you buy it yourself, or did your dad buy it, or how did oh, it work? Oh gosh, no! I it was somebody. I worked at McDonald's, and somebody uh, owned it, and I she was selling it, and I and I bought it for three hundred bucks. Wow, it was affordable. Yeah. <laughs> now it didn't look this good. Oh, Yours God. was a four door. Yeah. Come on alongside me, and this one obviously is the two door. And I have to first of all get to the side, and then I got to start stepping back. So maybe you want to come along with sure. me to get far enough back so that we can get all of that. And that's back, boy. That is a long vehicle. Yeah, it's a lot of car. Now, is this uh, you enjoy driving this? And. It's so much fun with the chrome from the front. Is this all part of the 500 package? It this is. chrome on the on the bottom. Yep, the chrome underneath is the, is part of the 500 package. Uh, this car did originally come with a vinyl roof, but um, we didn't put it back on because I kind of liked it without, you know. Okay. I'm just curious, what was the color of the vinyl roof? It was black. So it had a black roof. Monaco, this interesting vents, venting, yeah, it, venting, yeah. which might have helped. I want to show something in the car that I thought was interesting. Usually I'll go through the interior in a second, but they got this little switch that features air conditioning right there, which is really kind of unique. They, you know, kind of in the scene that this was 1967. And let me show these rims for a second. Your husband did a great job making those deep dish. Yeah, he bought those for my birthday about five years ago. And you wanted that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wanted them, yeah. <laughs> that's a car. That was a good birthday present. That, that's a Big car time. girl when they say that. Yeah, yeah. I've never was... heard my wife say that, by the way. Lou, you bought me rims. <laughs> Thank you. That was a very nice surprise. Yeah. Me. Another thing unique about this car. Please. Um, it was actually built in, in Windsor, Canada. So uh, the back lights, and someone is probably going to comment on this, the back lights are actually from a Polara. Oh, really? Yeah, the Monaco back lights are a little bit different. Uh, but in Canada, that's what they did. They put the Polara lights um, and actually the Polara front, but we uh, modified the front to look back like a, an American Monaco. But I liked those Polara backlights, so we left them as they as they are. As they are. Yeah. All right, and we're going to show those in just a second. We will turn around. Let's open the hood, shall we? So was this car was a combination of cars, or tell me what we're looking at here? Well, it this it, it really is mostly original, except for <laughs> all the things I mentioned okay. that we modified. Um, but that's why it looks a little different, is because it was actually built in Canada. They didn't do things exactly the same in Canada as they do in the United States. But it certainly has all the U.S. 383 four-barrel muscle that we've come to love and enjoy. Now, was, I'm just curious, was your four-door for $300, what was that, a 440? It a was a 383 two-barrel. It was a 383 two-barrel. Yeah, but this all looks very familiar to me because when I was young, I used to do things like change the spark plugs, the wires, the timing. I did a lot of stuff to my 383, so when this car came along, it all looks very familiar to me. It, and the smile, too. I, I love it with the smile. Let's fire it up, shall we? Okay. We'll let them know what it sounds like. That very familiar Chrysler sound. I'm going to actually have, have you uh, step on the brakes for a moment. Let me listen to it idle. Now you're going to hear that we've got a little bigger exhaust on it. Well, you can 
put the baby to sleep on that. Can we step on the brakes? I want to show those tail lights. Oh, yeah. Man, give it a rev, please. One more good one. Very nice. Just listen to that. Beautiful. We're going to turn that around. So as I told you, we'd turn it around and feature those great taillights. I've heard all the names for them. Everything from cat eyes, Asian eyes, butterfly wings, you name it. But if there's some I haven't heard, feel free to put those in the comments and we'll find those out below. I would just call them great looking taillights. So Diane, is this uh, where the gas goes in under heavy metal? Yeah, that's right. Um, the Perfect. GMs commonly did this, but some of the Mopars did too. Got it. Let's uh, open this up, shall we? Sure. Now, I see dual exhaust and about two and a half inch pipes here. And I'm sure it didn't come with two and a half inch pipes, although I'm sure that that makes it a little more fun. I, I think originally it came with a single exhaust. This is a Monaco 500, so it does have um, some high performance stuff uh, it, an HP 383 nice. and a four barrel. Um, but, you know, of course, when we got a hold of it, we did, you know, did some upgrades to it. May I go to the interior? Sure. Great. Just before I go to the interior, I do want to show, just because the sun is right on this quarter, that you don't want to miss that. That is just clean. Yeah, they did a good job in restoration. Yeah, that's really... Very long panel. Good right there. One thing, too, interesting, 60s on this yeah. one is 67, is that... Notice flat bumper, so you don't have points all over that are going to get tagged. The whole back end is pretty straight across. All right, we'll go to the interior. May I open it? Sure. Thank you. So as I open it, a couple of unique key pieces right off the bat. The sun's somewhat hitting it, but notice this bamboo-like yeah, wood. Basket weave, yeah. The basket weave on top, nicely etched out there, scripted the Monaco 500. Now there obviously was a Monaco, but the 500 was an upgrade. They also put the basket weave on the back of the bucket seats. Go ahead, show me that if you would. Well, oh, that is great. That's unique. Yeah. Wow. And one of the features I really always liked about the car was, um, was the shifter. And they used that on a lot of the little cars. Um, but it's just it's just so uh, beefy. It is beefy. <laughs> I always really liked it. Yeah. Now this car did not originally come with power disc brakes, um, but again he he um, took them off of another Monaco and put them on this car. So you you've upgraded your Monaco in all the right ways. Yeah. I like how we have the Dodge listed there. The clock. The wonderful separation between the lighting with the gauges. This was pretty sporty back in the day. The round uh, speedometer rather than like a rectangular one. Yeah. And they put the Monaco. Now I'll just straighten the steering wheel out. We'll look like that. You've got a nice piece there. You've got nice steering here easy grip wheel with a little indentations on the back of it. Is that 114,000 on it? Yes. That's okay. Good. The lighting, let me just show you the headliner. Nice, very thick. The thickness on that. Yeah, well back in the day they did things, you know, quality. Yeah. You can't miss these back seats. I want to feature those for a second. Notice it almost gives you a split bucket feel along back window, along with Monaco 500 yeah, right there. The Sea um, the Body Chryslers. Let me as show well, you. Well, and the Plymouth. And just a little different angle. They gave it kind of this extended headrest feel. Yeah. As you could see right there. I think the only thing left, uh, the only thing left is uh, you and I got to take it for a ride. Okay, let's do it. So I'm here with Diane, and we're in the '67 Monaco 500. How's it feel? Ah, uh, this car is great. <laughs> we call it Christine because it, it runs so nice and uh, well, wait, it's wait. just a lot of fun to drive. Christine, I'm guessing, was a little temperamental. 
Well, this car, it just seems to have a life of its own. It's, we always say it has a good mojo. It has a good car. mojo. Yeah. There's been moments where Christine did not have well, such a good mojo. Well, this is true. Yeah, but this one's okay. Yeah, this, this car is just, it's just great. It's always been a lot of fun to drive. It's very easy to drive. It, it just, it feels like an extension. That's great. Now, your first car you shared was a C-Body. Does this bring back all of the memories Absolutely. of the first car? It's just like it, except better. Because my what? first car was a four-door. Um, it was not a four-barrel. You know, this it's, it's just, it feels the same, except better. And one of the things I love the most is the horn. And when the, we bought the horn? This, yeah. Go ahead, beep it. Okay, good. Is that classic or what? That is classic. <laughs> <laughs> the kids in the road are like, I think yeah, she wants like, me oh, to get out. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, kids. Sorry. They're, like, they're like, what? <laughs> we'll show them just a little bit where we're driving. We've got some of the uh, the trees changing color as well. It's a beautiful day here in the western suburbs of Chicago. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's I think cars kind of make us younger. And this is just evidence of that. It's just yeah. every time you get in it, it just makes you feel better. It does. It just makes you feel good. Driving this car makes me feel good. What's um, the reaction? Oh gosh, well, th when we go to shows, this car gets more attention than any other car that we own. Why? You know, well, because you just don't see them every day. No. You know, the Monaco and the Polaris, you know, with those those uh, iconic back lights, you know. Um, yeah. It, it just, it just, people just gravitate towards it, <laughs> you know. That is great. Well, I know that, uh, thankfully, I gravitated towards it. Was, <laughs> and you did as well. I, I did as well. I did the duck, duck, goose. I was like, duck, duck, goose. And yeah. it was this one right here. Look at these trees that we've got here. No, it's just gorgeous right now. It is gorgeous right now. Just fantastic. One of the other things I really like about this car is the little lights on the, uh, oh, the, on uh, the fenders. Yeah, the turn signal fenders. Yeah. And they work. They do work. Okay. They're not very bright, but they do work. So at night, you'd see those. Yes. So you've got three very distinctive points there in our hood. We've got the one, the two, and the right down the center. They put just the right hood dent, as yeah, I like to call it. I, know, and I love that. To give it just the, the feel of separation and yet uh, uh, symmetry all at the same time. Now talk that? about i got to show people this. Look oh at the trees. Gosh, look at that. Uh, that's good stuff. That is good stuff. Perfect uh, fall day. Yeah, perfect fall day. So much, so much fun. I'll just yeah, because little... when it gets this late in the year, you don't, you, you don't know when the, the last day you're going to put it away is going to be. This might be it. This might be it. So we might be ending this way on the, on the note. But what a great. Uh... Let me show this. It sounds good too, doesn't it? This car sounds great. <laughs> I mean, he, he talked about putting a 440 in it, and I said, no way. <laughs> Why? Why? Because I love this 383. I love it. What makes you gravitate towards it? Is that where your first car had one? Yes. Okay, there you go. It reminds me of it. And you want everything to remind you of that first one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's how I got this car in the first place. I said I'd rather have a car than a ring. And so I got the car. <laughs> you said I'd rather have a car than a ring? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a car girl right there that's for sure every, every guy on the channel just fell in love by the way with that statement right there they're right now they're grabbing their wives yeah, right. they're grabbing their wives they're going watch what this woman said oh gosh well when you go to the car shows you see all kinds of car girls you know well i have a question for you yeah. all right so you see all kinds of car girls what would you like to share with the globe about being a car girl, what what gravitory, what oh. what makes it special for you? Gosh, I don't know. I think you're. I think I call it the car gene. I think you either have it or you don't. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't. I. I mean, since I was a young girl, I just really like cars. That was it. And then I. I eventually it took me a while, but I did find the car guy. Uh, the right fit. <laughs> you know, the right guy. <laughs> That, that's a good match. And the rest is history. And the rest is history. Well, what a wonderful time. What a great time chatting with you and hanging out. I can't wait to uh, see what kind of reaction we have on the viewership with this car. Thanks so much for being on My Car Story. Well, thank you. My pleasure.